But the basics in life are, are the same, whether, you know, boxing is such a metaphor for life. If you're running a restaurant, for example, and you yeah. are coming to a restaurant and you're just about to meet the receptionist, what you want is you want somebody to, to see you, to see, smile and say hello to you before they see, smile, say hello to you. Yeah. Because it's your job, as somebody who's working in a restaurant, to be charming first. It's your job to make people feel welcome. Right? It's your job to be on the front foot. And in boxing, it's exactly the same. You've got to be on the front foot because yeah. if you're not on the front foot, the only way to win is if you punch. If you are not punching, if you are just defending, you can only draw or lose. And you are here to win. I That's like, what we're here to do. I like how you've correlated the two worlds. Front facing, maitre d', boxing. Talk to us about that, the start of your career and where you are now, because it's quite an unusual career trajectory. Well, I've worked in the restaurant business all my life. I decided to work in the restaurant business when I was 15. The good thing about the decision that I made is I didn't have any doubt about what I wanted to do. You know, I speak to a lot of young people, you know, and very often people don't know what they want to do. They are unsure about the path that they want to take in life because they could go here, they could go there. I just wanted to be the best waiter that I could be. Yeah. And I wanted to work with the best people in the best restaurants, in the best hotels. I wanted to be in the Premier League of restaurants. That's what I wanted to be. And I wanted to be the top scorer. That's the kind of approach that I had. And when I came to the UK in 1992, I worked in, at the time, the best restaurant that there was in the country. Just got a three Michelin star. It was world famous. It was incredible. In life, is, everything is the same. If you do well somewhere, if you're good at something, if you impress people, if you've got a good reputation, then this is your calling card. You don't yeah. have to send your CV. You just yeah. say, hey, this is me. And somebody has already called to recommend you and you get the second job and so on and so forth. So that's what I did. And I progressed from basically washing plates to running multi-million pound business with 100 staff to look after. The thing that I really enjoyed is the more that I progressed in my job and the more I enjoyed it because the more there was things to do. And then, you know, because hospitality restaurant has a very bad reputation. You know, yeah. it's, it's either for stupid people or foreigners or both. If you're stupid, you can be a chef. And if you're really stupid, you can be front of house. That's what people think. But actually, when you're running a restaurant, it's not just carrying plates and describing food no. to people. You've got to run a business. It's about HR, it's about marketing, it's about operation, it's about your PR, it's about your strategy. How are you going to fill up your business and make sure that you've got guests coming to your restaurant and keep coming back? So there's so much to do. And, you know, when I did the, the transition, I mean, it was kind of a soft transition with television because I started television because of charity work that I was yeah. doing and the BBC heard about it. And then there was a show called Service, which I did in 20. 11 with Michel Roux and then I like the television world I really enjoyed it so I thought I'm gonna pursue that and I did so I did little things here and there then first dates came and I enjoyed it even more after first yeah. date and I thought I'm gonna carry on there I am I just pursued a dream if you like and I I saw an opportunity and I thought to myself I like doing that that's the thing the point is I enjoy it right yeah I enjoy meeting people you know when you when you work in this industry you know today I'm with you for example and you know you're an athlete you know you're, you're doing a very quite unique sports and and it's it's interesting because you meet people who are very different from you who've done different things and all this makes you makes you all the more richer and more experienced yeah. and you can use this experience everywhere you know that's what I found about this podcast is it takes me I've never been to Peckham before I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous but it's taking me to all four corners of the UK and beyond. And every single time I have a conversation with someone, I learn something. And that's a beautiful thing to come away with that new knowledge. This is it. You've worked on a fair few television shows. Is there one in particular that stands out that served you personally, that's been extremely fulfilling? You know, all the shows that I've done are very different. Yeah. And that's what I like about my TV career is that I don't do two things the same. Yeah. And that's what's brilliant because every time you're learning, every time you have to adapt, but also you enjoy it for what it is. Like, for example, when I do remarkable places to eat where I go in beautiful locations with foodies and, and chefs who take me to the best places to eat, basically to yeah. you know take me to the places in their little black book. And we find out why these restaurants are so amazing and what it takes to run a restaurant like this. You know, this is very much what I do in the restaurant business because this is the kind of thing I've been doing for years. Discovering places, suppliers, talking to people, discovering new product, because you bring it back to your restaurant. Yeah. You know, it's about making your restaurant relevant and exciting your guests with fresh new things, you know, so that they can come back and you can run a successful business. So that's one type of a show. You can do the ultimate wedding planner, Gordon, Gino and Fred. They're all different. 
Yeah. And yet you're doing the same thing. It's about television, it's about entertainment. Television, media world is about entertainment. If you can't entertain, if you can't connect with people, with the audience, it's then it's, it's not going to work. Yeah. But for me, it's about fun. I'm really enjoying it. It's about the fun that I'm having and I'm really enjoying it. Is there any moment from your Fred Gino? No, wrong way around. It should be Fred first, right? <laughs> it doesn't really matter, really. Uh, from that, because there's a lot of traveling involved in that. And that's where, for me, when I'm traveling, and this is the shame about your knees, when I'm away on tour or doing various jobs, the running for me opens up a total new network of roads and opportunity to see a city or a place in a mm -hmm. totally different light. Has it taken you to any places where? Yeah, but you know, I love walking. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, um, I mean, I can't run at the moment. I mean, I can't run anymore full stop because I just don't want to bugger my knees any more than they yeah. are. But I can walk and I'm a hard walker. I'm a fast paced walker, so I can just go and walk. Can't run, but I can walk. No, the only thing is, it. if you want to get a workout of your walking, you know, I mean, you could do a 5K or a 10K, but if you are walking, you've got to go a bit further, you know, in order yeah. to get the it's workout. Time, yeah, it? it's just time. In and around here, yeah. I mean, within half an hour here, you uh, are in the countryside, you're in Kent, yeah, you know, and incredible. you are in some unspoiled, beautiful places where you, can't, you don't see a soul. That's so, the next TV show, Fred's Best Places to Walk. Yeah, why not? Let's we'll do go. it together. Yeah, let's go. I, uh, I've not walked in Kent for a while. Maybe we should have walked to Kent today. In fact, there you go. That's the new series. How far can we walk? Yeah. Walk in and talk. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this, uh, this park. Isn't it beautiful? It, it, and it what is I like glorious. is there's so many different areas, you know? Like here, for example, we're in this very kind of secluded area. There's lots of flowers and the trees are low. And you go over there and this is where you can play football and have a... A suntan, you know, do you see some guys yeah, that was coming? They were all in their swimsuit, you know, sunbathing in Peckham. Yeah, they had their budgie smugglers on. <laughs> yeah, they had. We should have bought those today and the boxing gloves. That's it. Next time. <laughs> Next time. I'd love to have a little Well, my boxing gym is down the road. Perfect. We go there and... Uh, uh, and then we're going to throw ourselves we have off a spa. Uh, the diving board as well. <laughs> Are you going to do a white collar fight? Have you done one? Fred? Yeah. I lost, sadly. Okay. But, uh, Were you scared at all? Because for me, it scares me. I've done. Yeah, no, no, you get scared, of course. A lot in my time where I've put myself physically on the limit and I'm like, do I want to do it again? That's. Well, that's the elephant in the room in boxing is death or a uh, very serious injury, brain injury. Yeah. This is the elephant in the room and it's very real and very serious. And in saying that, I have been boxing for years, sparring every single week, hard rounds, 10 rounds in a row, you know, just sparring. Yeah. And But I didn't think about it. Now that I'm a bit older, you know, I spar with my son, yeah. but it's a very different kind of sparring. Of course, I'm not going to be punching him on the head, but he's pushing me to the limit. He's really trying to knock me out. But if I can't end all my, my son, this is it, I've got to stop. So at the moment, you know, I've got the age, I've got the experience for me. Yep. He can come, he's not going to get me. <laughs> Fist up, right? Yeah.